Welcome to Chapter 10, Biomechanics, Linear Kinematics. Uh, we're talking today about the form or technique, the kinematic side of biomechanics. We want to talk about uh, single plane motion uh, in the linear sense or two plane motion. Uh, we will get to angular motion in the next chapter. Uh, we're going to walk through distance, displacement, speed versus velocity, and acceleration, and finish with trajectory and projectile motion. Um, some key points, I want to point out that you can have both qualitative and quantitative linear kinematics. You can have numbers in kinematics. Um, forces are kinetics. We allow for measurement of both range of motion and uh, number of reps, timing, height, those types of numbers uh, when it comes to quantitative kinematics. Um, when we're talking about distance versus displacement, let's start off there. Uh, we've already talked in class about the ability for someone to run a certain distance around the track. Uh, this runner, Ken, may go ahead and do one lap. At that point, his distance has been one lap. His displacement has been zero as he returns to where he started on the track. If we were to have the distance of one half of one lap, we would end up with a displacement of the width of the track, the, di the uh, total displacement of his body from a start point to an end point. All of this is measured in the first unit of meters. We're going to go ahead and write that with distance. We're using meters for either distance or displacement. Um, for speed and velocity, we are then uh, adding up a, a second degree order. We are then measuring in meters per second. Um, so we're asking how far has someone traveled in a given amount of time. Uh, speed is the length or the distance over time. Velocity is the displacement or the change in position over time. Um, this is a key difference. We are simply advancing. The idea of speed would be the speed of Ken's run around the track, whereas the velocity would be a measurement of his displacement given any amount of time. Um, and the third order is going to be acceleration. This is the change in speed or velocity. So we have meters per second squared. Um, this is the rate of the change of the velocity, uh, whereas velocity was the rate of the change of displacement. So you see we're adding complexity as we get into acceleration. Um, uh, your book also talks about the difference between stride length and stride rate. If your goal is max speed, there would be a balance between how long you were stepping out and how quickly you were moving your feet. That would be the difference between stride length, how long your, your pattern is, or stride rate, how fast your feet are moving quickly through that, that pattern. Um, there is an optimal uh, stride length and stride rate for any given speed. Um, and eventually, you of course reach a length that is too much for your body to reach to, or a rate that is too fast to keep up with. So your body has a limit um, of how big a length or fast a rate that it can go. A crucial question that you should go ahead and pause afterwards is why does stride length drop off? Go ahead and pause the tape for about a minute and try to figure that out. And as we continue, why would stride length drop off? Why do we reach a limit? Because of muscle length. Your muscles only have a given length. Um, a passive insufficiency for two joint muscles would limit the extents of stride length. Um, Again, when we come to acceleration, we're talking about a change in velocity over time. Um, acceleration, important to note, may be positive, may be negative, or may be zero. Uh, a zero acceleration would equal a constant velocity. Zero acceleration does not necessarily equal zero velocity. It just equals a constant velocity. So you would have no acceleration if you were maintaining speed or velocity. Um, we use uh, positive and negative acceleration instead of the words acceleration and deceleration. We will try not to use the, the term deceleration at all in this class. Uh, let's move on to projectile motion. A projectile is a body that is projected into the air and is only acted upon by gravity and air resistance. We only have gravity and the resistance of air acting upon it. That is a projectile. Whether it's a football, a javelin, a diver in midair flipping, all of those could be examples of projectiles. Um, they are analyzed in both horizontal and vertical separately. 
Um, the vertical aspect would equal the gravitational pull plus the resistance of air. Uh, the horizontal is just equating air resistance um, and, and eventually measuring the distance traveled in the projectile. Uh, those are the only forces acting in a projectile. A trajectory is the flight path of an object, the path that it flies, the flight of a football, the path of a diver flipping through the air. There are three factors that uh, affect trajectory. We have the angle of projection, the projection speed, and the projection height. In the example, uh, as your book gives, of a baseball pitcher, the projection height would be the height of the arm when the ball is released. The projection angle is the angle compared to horizontal that that ball is released at. And the uh, projection speed would be the speed that the ball is thrown. These are the three uh, components of a trajectory. The angle of projection, or the angle of release, the projection speed, and the projection height. Um, examples of a soccer ball would have a much lower projection height than a baseball because the soccer ball is being kicked from the ground. Um, although uh, both could have similar angles of projection. Um, and projectile motion is, is important to note, it's a vector quantity, which means we are interested in both direction and magnitude. Um, make sure that you are familiarized with uh, the laws of constant acceleration. There are three of them, and we'll continue to talk about kinematics as we continue in Chapter 11 with Angular. Thank you.